Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. In today's video, we're going to be sharing with you some ideas that we've come up with on getting started with whether you're making your own flies or your crappie jigs or panfish jigs affordably. We got some new ideas. We've also got some comments from our viewers and we've also potentially found something that may be able to save you hundreds of dollars getting started in tying and making your own jigs. So let's get to the video. Again, guys, I'm going to try to keep this video short. We will be posting our Tackle Shop Tuesday video today as well, where we're going to be tying up some flies. One of our comments that we recently got was from a viewer named Tattoo Alley. Tattoo Alley said they really enjoyed our videos where we're actually making a lure and then taking y'all out fishing with us. And what we've done in the past on a few of our lures since we've just started the lure part of this series is we've made a lure in the shop and then I take it out and we'll do 10 casts to see if it catches anything. And we're just giving it 10 casts, the heat of the summer, and or if we have the opportunity, we'll take you kayak fishing with us. We're gonna continue fishing with the lures that we're making here on the channel. And throughout the summer, I've been teaching a Sunday school class, so it's really consumed a lot of our free time. Summer is over and the class is over. So we're gonna be concentrating harder on trying to bring you guys some more making lures as well as showing you how they catch fish. So part of what Tattoo Alley challenged us to do is to continue making videos where people can use common materials and get started in the fly tying, jig making affordably, especially if you're a young man or whatever and you're not making much money, maybe you're cutting the neighbor's grass and you're trying to get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna take you over to the 1826 fly tying station. It'll be a brief introduction to the fly tying station that we just recently completed. There will be a full build video on that coming up soon. So let's turn around and we'll get started with that. Okay, so for starters, I went by Hobby Lobby and I looked and see what they had for sale. And this, they had several colors of these little feather boas and they're only four bucks. Guys, as you can see, I've already started cutting on this one end over here, and that's gonna be that's gonna be able to make a ton of flies. Chartreuse is a great color, and I'm telling you, I know that you can buy the little bags of the feathers, and, and not all feathers are equal, but these are perfect for the 116th, the 132nd, and maybe even a hair bigger jigs. Those are gonna be the two main sizes that I would use for crappie and perch jigs. So that's number one. What we found at the flea market is this big bag of fake fur for one dollar. And I'm telling you, you could probably make a thousand of these flies or jigs with this bag of fur. Now, yes, it is white, but that's another thing that makes this kind of fun. I don't see any reason in the world why we couldn't paint these or use a marker and change it from white to red or blue or chartreuse or whatever we choose. But we will be using some of this, again, $1 for a great big bag. That's gonna last a lifetime. That's gonna be way more than we need. Next up from the flea market is we've got this whole bag of various string. And I think we could make some bodies out of this and then coat it with super glue or epoxy and it would hold up just fine. I like the sparkle in this one. That's the thing that caught my eye in this one. But the blue, the red, uh, the off yellow, greens, those are all good colors in my mind for crappie jigs anyways, especially if all we're doing is making them with the body. Yes, this is made out of cotton and that's something that we'll have to address. Like I say, we may have to use epoxy or super glue to coat these so that it doesn't deteriorate quickly as a jig and you know what guys if it ends up catching us some fish and you had to change it every dozen or two dozen fish you catch that's still cheaper than minutes so that's something that we'll look into we're going to use that and incorporate that in our jigs coming up and again guys this is just going to be a continuation of building your own lures making them at home and saving money in the process. And these I thought were some great finds just hitting up the local Hobby Lobby and the Walmart. One thing that I didn't mention and part of what I told you at the very beginning of this, a way that you could save hundreds of dollars potentially is Walmart. Guys, these deals of yarn are $4.99. There is so many lures 
in this one deal of yarn for five bucks and I'm going to show you how we're going to make some awesome jigs using this yarn and we're going to go out and catch crappie and we're going to catch some awesome fish. Again, this is five bucks. If you guys don't have five bucks, and I understand times are tough right now, maybe your grandma or somebody has some yarn that you could use, just ask her for about 10 feet. If we still have problems getting the yarn, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. We're going to, when this video hits 75 views, if you're interested in the giveaway, hashtag yarn at the bottom of you, in your comment somewhere. We'll give away 10 foot of the chartreuse and we're gonna give away 10 foot of the black to help you get started. Again, when this video hits 75 views, we will do the drawing and good luck to each and every one of you. And until next week, be sure to check out one of our playlists some of some of our other videos. We've already started fishing a bunch of the lake in Far East Texas. And we're gonna be taking you along with us as we're continuing to fish in these various areas. And then we're also going to continue our Tackle Shop Tuesday. Every Tuesday we're going to be posting a video on a different lure that you could use for crappie fishing. We're also going to be maybe going back to Oklahoma and fishing the Blue River to where we're actually going to be doing some trout fishing. There are some lakes here in East Texas that they stock in the fall and winter time with trout. And we may be able to go hit some of them this year as well. Until next time, I hope you all have a blessed week. And let's get outside and make something happen.